It's an old sore, I must say, um, and um, a transition program helped also to create awareness among the adults with infections because we are discussing this with them. The GIA is, is not becoming RA, and the GIA patients will never be an RA patient. And then a, ch a child who has an early onset GIA and anti nuclear advance needs to be seen by the ophthalmologist also when she's. Uh, Older. So they, but it takes a long time for them to become aware. And we have had many children who were after, uh, that, that went not through the transition, but after transfer, that were relabeled as RA, and that are sitting in cohorts who go to protocols like RA patients. Mm -hmm. But I think if you, if you, if you, with your physician, you work on a transition program, it helps to uh, create awareness from the adult. And I found it a very positive experience. Also, we learn from them. Uh, it's not that we know everything and they, they, they know other things that are very useful for us. And I felt that um, they appreciated to be better informed about JIA, about that illness that they will have to, to take care of. You are interested. Still needs, make, things need to improve. They, like uh, it was mentioned, the adapted environment, mm -hmm. uh, and also our patients, they were so much hoping for an adapted environment, but still they are sitting in rooms with two or three, or in the day clinic with infusions, where one or two young people and 40, 60 year olds. And yeah, that's not what you want to uh, do. Mm -hmm. So this always needs to improve. Mm -hmm. um, Analyst. Yeah. If it could be your way mm -hmm. of doing transition. Uh, how would you like it to be? Exactly. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, I think it was uh, multiple appointments, uh, not one, but two or three, I think, over a year. And um, all together, pediatrician, uh, the rheumatologist and uh, the other rheumatologist, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, it would be nice if the first time maybe all the uh, adolescents are together at one clinic and that you are not the only one. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, yeah, you are not the only one. Uh, that's your manual for the ones that are old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, yeah. Uh, Sorry, because my daughter mm -hmm. said, what, I'm going to another clinic where all this will be? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, in Slovenia it's not like this. Maybe it should be uh, uh, some transition point where you can go to the uh, rheumatologist, not pediatric, but rheumatologist mm -hmm. in the same location. Yeah. Yeah. Is that how it looks in your country or not? No, no, no. As, physically, as, as no, no, it's not, no, it's the same hospital. We are one huge hospital. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's not a floor, and it's another yeah. type of setting. So yeah. it's not really. Uh, Can I come in? in? In Scotland, we have um, been linking in with some of the adult rheumatology clinics to try and deal with this, and we've worked with one centre in Fife, um, where we're going to have a young adults clinic. So mm -hmm. it's a clinic within the adult hospital but it's for 16 to 30 year olds. Um, and so they're seeing the adult rheumatologist, but it's um, specifically for that younger age group, so they're not in the waiting room yes. with the older group. With the other ones. Yeah, and we're running a drop-in um, service there as well. So if they want to find out about the workshops and events we run, if they want information, um, then they can come and speak to us um, as well, as obviously seeing the health professionals. So it's building in some of that um, additional kind of support around that time, and um, because what we found is um, a lot of the doctors don't always have time to signpost them to our services, even though they know that, that often they're, they're really helpful, or they forget. You know, you're caught up with talking about medication and blood tests and all those things. So us being in the clinic with um, partly our idea and partly from the adult rheumatologist who said it would be great just to have somebody that 
can just say to your person, go and speak to Jill, she can tell you about what they offer. And so um, that's what we're starting. We're starting at the end of this month, the first one. So it's completely brand new. Um, but I can let you know how that goes. But actually, you are functioning as a transition coordinator, almost, no? Uh, no, because I'm not going between the pediatric and the adult. I'm only going to be in the adult. But you're the spokesperson towards the young person who merits it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it would be ideal, I think, for it to be a specialist nurse or somebody that mm -hmm. understands um, paediatric and adult services mm -hmm. as that transition coordinator. Because yes. um, I think that the young people have questions that I'm not a health professional and that I can't answer. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very clear, yes, we can signpost them on and we can provide them information, but um, we're, not, we're not the experts on, on the medical Because at least you did not have a transition and did no. you feel that this was missing in your... Um, no, the Rama consultant, the trans consultant, mm -hmm. was something like that. Um, because she told me about adult clinic and I can ask her questions. But um, it would be nice if one person is there to uh, guide you through the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do the adult, if, if there is no specific coordinator, do you feel that you can address issues like more psychological issues that is trying to uh, talk about making friends, making choices at school, uh, relationships, um, uh, alcohol, drinking, smoking? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think you can have those kind of topics discussed. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> I uh, don't ask her this question, okay. but um, uh, I think she is there for all uh, questions. Yeah, but I don't know if she is um, <coughs> professional enough to go to uh, psychology questions. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you, would you feel comfortable in that kind of health setting, <coughs> asking those kind of questions or having those kind of conversations? Because I think, and I might be wrong, but the young people we work with, mm -hmm. sometimes there isn't time, but sometimes it, they don't feel comfortable enough in that setting yeah. to ask those kind of questions. So I, it's a loaded question, yes. sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I ask all my questions to my doctor, I'm very open to okay. hear and discuss some things, but, uh, but I already do that. And a lot of patients uh, don't ask them to ask them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think. Um, that the transition is the focus on that, and that is mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. the transition nurse is very good, I think. Yeah. 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 Can I ask a question just out there? I think probably what I've gathered this morning is that there's definitely challenges that are shared across the countries, there's issues that are similar. And I guess it strikes me as um, it might be good to have something that is transition guidelines for Europe mm -hmm. in terms of quite broad but also you know there's there's always going to be similar challenges around um, what expectation would be placed on services to provide you know based on research that's already been done do you think that that would be helpful useful yes, yes okay. of course okay mm -hmm. yeah. so then i'm happy to know to let you know that the paper is written okay <laughs> could you send it to us <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> and i think that uh, it was one of you know share yes, yes. Mm. yes. Yeah. And one of the topics, and there has been a, a group of yeah. is that some parents uh, have been involved, as, and some adult uh, patients yes, yes, have been involved yes. as well, uh, who has been working uh, around recommendations for mm -hmm. uh, transition. And so the paper is under review. Mm -hmm. So uh, as soon as uh, yeah. this is for all of you, but maybe to Wendy as well. And this is so fantastic, all the good practices. But would there be the possibility one day when we could be hearing all the young people and all the fantastic professional input of good practice in the main hall where there's all those consultants? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. True. So yeah. 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 I feel like I want to take you all and say, come on, we listen yeah. to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that it's shared, like you say, through every country. But also yeah. that will happen. Yes. That yes. has been discussed and Jonah was at the press council and oh, we have discussed good. the real need 
for bringing the connection, not just among us and with one or two doctors, every doctor mm -hmm. needs to hear this. It's extremely uh, lear learning, Indeed, teaching, and see the So next year we will make an ENCA session as a scientific session, parallel with the other ones and doctors will be in mm -hmm. Teenagers go to teenagers in different ways, and uh, the same as some teenagers that you know they're looking for themselves, they're looking for, and they might do things that are dangerous and start smoking and start drinking. I'm sure that happens whether you've got JAA or you haven't got JAA. Mm -hmm. So, and often those the teenagers are not open, no. not to their parents, and not to their doctor, and not to anyone around. But they might be open, for example, to someone that's 20, 21, yes, yes, that's yes, in yes. young part. And even if it's international, even if it's in a Facebook group or in it, yes, uh, there might be more openness to questions. And there is a, a young adult there, or a person that's you know already passed the adolescent years, but still is close enough to remember mm -hmm. that could give advice, that could give you know input, yeah. that could lead onto a more healthy way yeah. of dealing with yeah. behaviour that's yeah. not necessarily. The most healthy, you know, you're on yeah. track said, but you are drinking, you know. A, a young adult saying, you know, okay, you're drinking, but like keep it down to sort of a glass of wine a day is totally different from a parent saying it or yeah. from yeah. a doctor saying it. Yeah. So yeah. maybe yeah. that's just a challenge for us to maybe to try to start something that could make a difference to this transition. Yeah, I, I, do you know, I'm just thinking that when those guidelines come out, it would be really good to have a sort of, I don't know, us making the, the push as you know patient representatives parents and young people pushing to try and enforce this mm -hmm. is not the right word but mm -hmm. sort of saying that these encourage. these that encourage that's probably the best word um, <laughs> but encouraging and saying as ENCA and as the people involved with ENCA you know transition standards are important and perhaps taking some of those documents and collectively turning them into I don't know, sort of straightforward, more sort of user friendly guides and, and somehow building in mm -hmm. support or something around it. Um, because it, it just, yeah, people in the room have got the, the power to push it. And if there is standards, we want to make sure that they're informed. But what, what do we need to get this implemented in other hospitals in other countries? Funding for what? So we don't have to work on governments, probably. Yeah, governments, um, <laughs> in this sense, it's extremely, as you know, it's extremely, extremely difficult uh, to, to convince governments for uh, health, so health resources that are not immediately uh, resulting in uh, measurable yeah. improvement. Mm -hmm. And how we can say, we even see a positive effect on this, and we see a positive effect. But that's not what they will uh, value. If you can show that I have a medication and this patient without a medication can't go to school and now we have a secret medication, can't go to school, the parents cannot, yeah, and now you are in a better situation. This is very difficult. Um, I think the, the first thing is within your own hospitals, talk with your own doctors, and not just pediatrics, but pediatrics with other doctors. And so build your own team. And then hospitals, I would do it step by step. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also with experience that I've learned it's it's really extremely difficult to to convince uh, the health authorities for this kind of very important issues. So but if you build yeah, no, but I think if there's guidelines, we can all go to our hospitals and yeah, say, "These are absolutely. this is the paper. These are the guidelines. This and what is, can we do?" Yeah, yeah. this. Absolutely. Why is this why not like this? Why it was done?
software to implement it, you need to make the benchmark of the, the country. So you can really differentiate amongst each other because that's really the power of the patient. To point that you are a neighbor country and say, well, hey, look over there. They can do this. Why can't we do this? So yeah. Yeah. Although sure that you there too, my experience is quite frustrating. In Belgium, we don't have a, <coughs> another issue. We don't have access to I1 blockage, no access to anakinra. So our patients with bad systemic illness can't get the right medication. And I I write to all the important ones and I say, go to the Netherlands, look at France, look at Germany. What does my child have to move there? That because they don't care at all. It's uh, you're right, uh, we shouldn't give up the fight, but, uh, and of course, if you want more, you join, you might, uh, you might get more in the end. <laughs> yes. So thank you very much for all our speakers. That was very well. So we're going to move on to some associations that are going to talk about what they do in their own countries.